Hey folks, today we're going to give you a quick tour of the Hangar 9 uh, Extra 300. Um, I'm just finishing up this build. It's actually my first uh, giant scale build and I decided to do it uh, electric, um, mostly because I, I don't know anything about uh, gas planes and have a whole bunch of uh, electrical equipment um, from all my helicopters. So I decided to repurpose some heli stuff and build this guy out. So I'm gonna give you a, a kind of quick tour of what we have. Um, starting at the front. All right, so up here, um, it's running a, a Zor 24 by 10, 24 by, uh, I think it's 11 prop, sorry. Um, spinners true turn, and as you can see, the, uh, the screw is actually a bit too long, so I'm gonna cut that down or get a new one. So I'm gonna take this off. Spinner. Put that aside. Um, and this is a prop adapter. It's actually a spinner adapter. Sorry, uh, because the uh, the motor shaft is not tapped uh, for a spinner screw. Uh, this basically just adapts the. Get this guy off. The motor shaft. So you can put the spinner on it. off here we go and there is the back plate of the spinner off. all right and next thing I'm gonna do is pull the cowling off so you can see what's uh, what we have going on inside this is not screwed on at the moment so it should come pretty easily All right, finally got the cowling off. It was stuck a little on the bottom. Uh, so for power, we're using a Rimfire 65 uh, CC motor. Uh, the reason I didn't go with the recommended, I think it's a Power 360 setup, is that I'm gonna be running this uh, on 14S, and uh, that motor is only rated uh, for 12S. So um, why go with 14S? Uh, the reason is that just happens to be what I have. Um, since I run uh, my, my larger helicopters on 14S, I have uh, a bunch of uh, 14S packs, well, you know, twin 7S packs. Um, so for an ESC, it's under there. I'm running uh, an extra cosmic ESC that I have. And uh, I looked at a couple motors uh, that were 14S capable, and uh, you can get uh, hackers um, and, and some other kind of German motors, which are uh, honestly obscenely expensive. Um, and I also tried, uh, there was a Turnigy uh, Rotomax 80cc motor, and um, I think it, it, it definitely supports 14S, and it, it might have worked, but honestly, I, I couldn't get it mounted, and it was more hassle than it was worth, and other people have had success uh, with the rim fire, so um, we're going to give that a shot. So kind of looking backward, um, this is obviously uh, the main kind of engine mount. Uh, this box right here is uh, the electric mounting kit. So basically when you're gonna go with electric power, you purchase this additional kit, which gives you um, this box and a couple other things. And we have the motor mounted to that. The ESC is mounted um, to the bottom of the battery tray. And so I'll show you that over here. So one of the other things uh, the electric kit comes with is a battery tray. So when you're building this, you actually remove uh, a piece here and this giant tray uh, fits in and it's screwed in here. Uh, the batteries go on top and the ESC goes in the bottom. As you can see, this is uh, where the canister would have gone in a gas setup. Uh, so the batteries uh, will sit right in there. Um, and kind of moving back, not much to it, right? Um, back here, we have the receiver. I decided to go with a, a Spectrum a nine channel receiver. It's a power safe receiver which has four satellites. Uh, there's two here and uh, two farther back. And so this guy you hook up uh, two receiver batteries to um, and basically it provides redundancy. So if the voltage on one of the batteries gets too low or it fails, it automatically switches over to the other receiver battery. So I figured uh, with a plane this size, um, good to have some safety. And so 
people ask uh, if you if you know uh, Cosmic ESCs, they're probably wondering why I'm not using the BEC because they are kind of regarded as some of the best BECs around, and um, people in the heli community uh, swear by their Cosmics, and and mine has you know been flawless in my helis as well. The reason is simply, you know, for the batteries I'm going to be running. Here, I'll pop one in here. The these Pulse. Uh, 4500 milliamp 7s packs. These are honestly probably a little bit on the small side for this plane. Um, it could probably go bigger, but this is what I have. So I figured um, I'm going to have no shortage of power, and uh, so pulling around some receiver packs is not going to be a, a big deal. So I decided to just run uh, separate receiver packs to keep things simple. Um, another thing, I'm kind of in the middle of uh, finishing up the build. Another thing I noticed and kind of trying to reuse a bunch of my uh, heli gear was um, as it stands, here I'll show you, with the batteries up here and the motor up there, like the center of gravity on this is way, way far forward. So I'm, right now I'm working on getting, trying to get the center of gravity uh, back. And uh, the instructions call for the receiver packs basically sitting right under um, the receiver on that tray. So the, the receiver packs I had on hand uh, were a little small. They were 1500 milliamp packs um, that I was sharing with a Goblin 570 and I thought I could just reuse two of them in here, you know, kind of roughly putting them under like that. Um, but it, the center of gravity is still way off so I'm actually gonna swap these out for two uh, 3000 milliamp packs which, you know, again, probably overkill. Um, it, but it'll take me through probably many, many flights. It probably, you know, better part of a day's worth of flights with a total of uh, 600, uh, 6,000 uh, milliamp, uh, milliamp on the receiver. So uh, anyway, that's kind of where we are with the build. Um, you can see uh, the tail, wings are over here. Um, it's going really well. Um, everything is kind of set up at this point. Uh, all the servos and control throws are adjusted. And now it's just a matter of um, getting the receiver packs in and getting the um, center of gravity fixed and then we'll, we'll go for the main flight. Uh, so that is it.